Okay, so we can have institutions that affect, uh, impact the wage that's paid to workers, such as unions. We can have regulations that affect the wage paid to workers, such as the minimum wage. And then the last possible reason is not really an institutional story or a regulatory story, but it's just a management story. Uh, so you could have a managerial reason why uh, wages uh, would behave in one way or the other. Uh, or if you want, why firms don't just try to pay workers as little as possible? So, you know, unions, that's one reason why firms are not going to pay workers as much as, uh, as, much as they could, or you know, as much as possible, because once you have unions, you have to bargain with the unions. Um, and so, they have a lot, you know, they have power, they are big, they can go on strike. So once you face a union as a firm, you're not going to pay workers as little as possible because you face that. Another reason why a firm may not pay workers as little as possible is because you have minimum wage laws. Okay, so you cannot pay workers less than the minimum wage. So even if maybe some workers would be desperate enough to work for less, the law prevents that. So that gives you a threshold on how little firms may pay. A third reason why firms may not pay workers as little as possible, why wages may be much higher than what uh, workers could accept, is a managerial reason. So there is a managerial reason why workers, you know, why firms may not try to squeeze workers as much as possible, and hence the wage may be somewhere in between what's acceptable by worker and what's acceptable by firm. Um, and that reason is illustrated here with a little story uh, that comes from uh, the Ford uh, factory. Uh, so this is a, a story that covers the Ford factory around the time of World War I, so 1913 to 1950. What this little table is showing you is uh, showing you the turnover rate. At, so Ford started to produce cars, you know, before World War I, um, and this is showing you the turnover rate and the layoff rate at the Ford factory around the time of this story, so 1913, 1914, 1915. So turnover rate, this is just the number of people who quit voluntarily, you know, because they just don't want to work there uh, at the firm anymore. Layoff rate is the rate of workers who are fired by the Ford uh, factory by the Ford company because you know they don't perform enough, they make too many mistakes, they're not just uh, up to the task. Um, so what do you see? So in 1913, what you can see is that turnover rates were huge, uh, 370 percent turnover rate in one year. So what that means is that <laughs> the factory replaced its workforce in its entirety three times during the year just because people left uh, left the factory. They have read 62%, so you know, not, roughly two-thirds of the workers were fired because they were not competent enough. And then what you can see is that these numbers are dropping very quickly, and in 1915, you can see that the turnover rate is only 16%, the layoff lay rate is almost zero, which means that nobody was fired, the people were doing a very good job, and almost nobody wanted to leave, only 10% of the, or you know, 15% of the workers wanted to leave. And of course, for a factory, this is uh, very profitable if you're able to have workers who work well with low layoff rate and workers who don't quit. It is very beneficial. It means that you can train your workers, you can teach them you know, how to operate um, the machines. Um, and because they don't leave and because they're not fired, they keep that training and use it to improve uh, you know, the, the work they do to work of higher quality, to work faster. So being able to retain your workers, teach them, and uh, build on that improved productivity is very valuable for a firm. So you can see that Ford was able to achieve that in 1915. How did they do it? How did they manage to retain their workers and also have workers, have workers work better? Well, the way they do it was by increasing uh, pay. Okay? Um, and so in fact, what happened, the policy that was implemented is that in 1914, so the middle year here, Ford decided to increase the pay of all the workers. So previously, workers were paid only $2.30 for nine hours of work. And Ford decided to introduce this policy that's quite famous, that's called the five 
um, dollar a day policy. So for this, I need to pay all the workers five dollar a day for an eight hour day. So workers would work a little bit less. These were still very long days, but they would work a little bit less and they would pay, be paid twice as much. Okay. So you would wonder why is Ford was, you know, one of these big, big um, capitalist um, of the beginning of the 20th century, one of the very successful um, big entrepreneurs of the time, why did he decide to pay all his workers more than twice as much for less work? And actually in his biography, Ford explains the reason why he decided to increase pay so much. And he says that there was no charity involved in this decision. Uh, we wanted to pay these wages so that the business would be on a lasting foundation. We were building for the future. A low wage business is always insecure. The payment of $5 a day for an eight hour day was one of the finest cost cutting moves we ever made. So although they paid workers more, they gained so much in additional productivity because workers were working you know, with higher quality and also because they didn't have to replace so many workers all the time. They, you know, the factory worked so much better that it more than compensated uh, that increase in wages. Okay, so there may be managerial reason why firms are not going to try to squeeze workers as much as possible, and the wage is not going to be just the minimum that firms that workers would take. Okay, um, there is a technical word uh, for this type of reasoning that higher wages may actually uh, increase productivity for work for a worker. Um, that theory is actually called um, efficiency wage theory. And actually, you have an uh, optional reading um, that I've allocated, uh, that I've assigned, that covers efficiency wage theory and that explains a little bit how it would work. But the idea of efficiency wage theory is that higher wages increase profits. Although they always increase cost, but overall they increase profit because um, they increase productivity. Uh, more than cost. And here, uh, so there are many reasons why higher wages may increase productivity. So here in the fourth story, we've seen two. One is that um, workers are more um, dedicated to the firm. That could be one reason. If you pay them higher wages, they uh, feel grateful to the firm uh, and therefore you know they work with higher commitment so that could explain in the fourth story why we have a lower uh, layoff rate so this type of logic is called a gift exchange theory right so in that type of theory it's a sociological theory that postulates that when somebody makes a gift to somebody else, that person feels the need to reciprocate by making a gift in returns, you know, something we see in many cultures. And so here's the idea is that the firm makes a gift to the worker by paying them a generous wage. The, firm, the worker reciprocates by working, you know, by being uh, devoted to the company and working with high quality. So that would explain the low layoff rates in the fourth story. Another reason is that if you pay workers more, of course, it's more attractive to work at your firm. So if you are Mr. Ford and you pay your workers more, it's more attractive to work at Ford than to work at the other factories or in surrounding farms that pay less. Okay? Um, and so if you pay workers more, working at the firm becomes much more attractive. compared to other firms. So just if you pay more, the job becomes more attractive. And of course, you're going to be able to limit the turnover because nobody will want to quit a job that pays so well. Um, so basically, you pay workers more, you become, you know, as a firm, you become really the firm that uh, everybody wants to work at. So, you know, today that would be like 
some of the tech companies like Google or Facebook, or some you know, financial companies, some banks like Goldman Sachs. These are companies that everybody knows pay a lot and that a lot of people you know, aspire to work at for that reason. Uh, so that's another reason why paying a higher wage could actually be a profitable move. And in the case of the Ford company, that seems to have happened somewhat because the turnover rate dropped a lot. So people stopped quitting and moving to other firms. Uh, so that could be another reason uh, why it's actually profitable uh, to, do, uh, to do such a thing. So you could have, uh, that's a little bit more of a transactional reason that this is just rational to um, work well and try to not shirk and not be fired and also not quit if that firm pays much more than all other employees. You could have a more sociological reason, as we said, which would be a gift exchange reason that you feel better towards your employer when you're paid well and that would increase your productivity. And whatever the reason, uh, efficiency wage theory says that there are you know, many reasons that could explain why actually paying a higher wage could be a you know, profit-making cost.